13 of Ephesians chapter 6. Now don't you worry about those little ones back there. Nothing blesses my heart more than to hear little ones praising God. See, that's what they're doing. Amen. They're making their presence known to God in the house of God. Don't you worry about that. That blesses my heart. That's like, they're just saying amen. Amen. And so that just blesses my heart. Amen. Wherefore, verse number 13 of Ephesians chapter 6, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Yeah. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, right. and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yeah. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Father God, I thank you for your Word. I praise you for it. Help us, God, that now to glean the things from it that you would have us to receive this day. And we'll give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name and for his sake. We ask and pray all this. Amen. 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 Since we're fighting against enemies in the spirit world, we have to have special equipment. Amen. Both offensive equipment and defensive equipment. Now I shared with you last week that when I enlisted in the United States Army, the very first week uh, that we, when they took us away and took us to Fort Dix, New Jersey for basic training, you take all of that time and you're signing all kinds of papers getting poked and prodded, doing all kind of physical, all of that stuff. But then you go to the point, get to the point where you're given your government issue everything. I mean, right down to the toothbrush and the toothpaste and the razors and the socks and the underwear and the shirts and the pants, everything that they want you to have. Amen. And they will, will issue you your belts and your, your boots your uniform, the, your different hats, your helmets, all of those things that are issued by the U.S. government to the soldier. There's only one catch that they don't tell you about at the beginning. When you get your first paycheck, you see where all that's deducted. Amen. You think they're giving you this stuff. They don't give you nothing. Amen. They charge you for every single stitch of it. Amen. And the, and the first two paychecks you get, all of that has been, been deducted from your pay. Amen. Well, uh, amen. God has provided us our armor. Yeah. The whole armor of God. Yeah. And he provides it for free. It yeah. doesn't cost you a thing. You receive it at salvation. Amen. Now, we don't know much of what to do with it. We may not know how to wear all of it at that moment, but we receive it when we surrender to Christ, Amen. our Lord. Amen. Amen. God has provided us all. Satan looks, see, for an unguarded area of our body. And that's why uh, from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, God has provided us with protection. From all of the fiery darts, the Bible says, right. that the devil, the devil and that the enemy uh, will fire at us. Well, the very first thing we need to understand that the spiritual armor <laughs> and the weapons that we have are available by faith. Yeah. You see, we have to have faith in God that he is able to provide right. and faith in God that he will provide. Amen. That he has provided. Amen. Right. And everything that uh, we accept by faith with God, He has given us to, in order to do battle with Satan, the enemy, because we will do battle yes. with Satan, right. our enemy. When we trust Christ as our Savior, Satan turns up the heat. Mm -hmm. And He reassigns all of His demons to attack. Uh, because, I, like I said, I've said before, he can't rob you of your salvation, you see, but he can rob you of your witness. Mm -hmm. He can rob you of your joy, and he can rob you of your peace, and he can diminish the power that you have with God Amen. and make you an ineffective soldier 
of the cross. Right. You see? And if we're going to be effective soldiers of the cross, we have to be protected. Amen. Amen. And God provides that, you see. The very first thing he says uh, there in verse uh, uh, 14, he said, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And that's a belt. Amen. That's your belt. Uh, the belt of truth or girdle of truth. Uh, when I was in the service uh, back years ago, uh, it is nothing like what they have now with the, the great technology and stuff, but we had what we call our web gear. And our web gear was like a belt that went around you. It was called the pistol belt. And it had holes all the way around it. it where you, and, and, and everything that the government gave you had these hooks. And those hooks were universal that would fit into that belt, you see. And then it had the whip gear that went up, the, the harness that basically was what it was, that was cold. But, but, but everything that you received would attach to that in some way. Everything. And so this is what uh, absolutely holds all the rest of the armor together is the belt of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Everything you see is held by the truth that is Christ Jesus. Amen. The truth of his word. All of the other weapons, all of the other armor that we will receive will do us of no good if we don't understand that it is all bound and held together by the truth of Christ Jesus My. and the truth of uh, his word. And uh, things will begin to slip. Uh, things will begin. Uh, if there's one thing God hates, it's a lie. He's clear in his word. Uh, that he, no liars will end. It'll be easier for a camel to pass through an eye of a needle than for a liar to enter through the gates of heaven. Amen. Lies uh, tear down people. You understand? Mostly the lie. Destroy. You know, the truth is the truth. Uh, my grandpa used to say, the truth will stand when the world will come. You know. So he said, son, just tell the truth. Me and my cousin, one night, he had a big prize bull. And he'd take care of that thing to all the county fairs around. And he loved that bull. He was proud of that bull. He'd raised it from a, a, a cat and everything. And it was, it was a good looking bull. And everybody wanted to use that bull to improve their herds around Sevier County and up that way. And me and my cousin was out there about 10, 11 years old, playing around the barn one day, and we decided that we were going to feed the bull for Papa. Papa had a big old ox out there for the corn cobs. And we shut the hill for the feed off of it. And we began to feed that bull of corn cobs. Now there's something I learned that I didn't know about cows and bulls. Number one, they'll eat as long as you'll give it to them. They'll never get full. And they'll eat, they love corn cobs. And they'll eat them things as long as you tell them. We fed that bull about half of that crib full of corn cobs. Until Granddaddy come out there and saw what we had done and beat us half the day. He said, you killed my bull. I said, how in the world have we killed your bull? He said, when he drinks water, those cobs are going to swell in his stomachs and cause his stomachs to explode. And it will kill him because we've given him so much. We thought we were doing a great thing. And he said, which one of you started feeding this bull these corn cobs? Whose idea was it? And we both went. <laughs> but he will both of us, amen. Again. And his bull died. It killed that bull. 
And he was mad for a little while. Oh, but he forgave us. But he told me something. He said, son, don't never lie. Don't never lie. But he said, the truth will stand in the world. And he'll always find out. Just tell the truth. No matter how bad he is or how bad he seems, just go on and tell the truth. You see, because if we lie, we begin to let lies invade us, see, uh, that loosens our armor because we lose our belt. Yeah. And the things that, we, that, that that belt connects together, we'll lose, you see. We'll lose that fresh plate of life practice. We'll lose our sword of the spirit of the word of God. We'll lose all of those things. Everything that foundation, everything that has an order with God, it starts with the truth. The truth of God and his word. Amen. And the truth of Christ Jesus. So we have the girdle of truth. See, unless we practice truth, we cannot use the word of truth. We have to practice the truth. Amen. Amen. And then uh, we have the uh, breastplate of righteousness, verse number 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, I did some research on this. And see, Paul, when he was writing this letter to the Ephesians, he was chained to a Roman guard. You understand that? 24 hours a day, seven days a week, always had guards chained to him as he was writing this letter. So he was making these comparisons with things they had on, you see. And this uh, uh, breastplate uh, that they wore was really like a vest that we would put on. It was made out of uh, steel plates and chains, you know, together. And you put that thing over you like that, and it came down over the front and over the back, and even you know, around the side had just a little gap. And each one was handmade for its wear for the person that wore it, and it fit perfectly. And it went from the neck to the waist, front, back, side to side. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, Paul said. Well, our righteousness is in Christ Jesus, you see. Uh, it is within. And we, we gain his righteousness when we trust him as our Savior and our Lord. And he is our righteousness. And he is complete. We are completely surrounded. When God looks at us, he sees the blood of Christ. Therefore, the righteousness of of Christ, you see. Uh, Romans 5, we have been justified, you see, to stand before his throne because of what Christ did at Calvary. Yeah. He shed blood, paid the atonement for the sin, and then his righteousness w we was imparted to us because none of us or our righteousness is as filthy rags yeah. and a stench in the nostrils of God. So we could not approach the throne of God uh, with, apart from Christ Jesus. Amen. His righteousness is uh, uh, applied to our account. Right. And we're covered in his righteousness, right. you see. Amen. Completely surrounded with it. But, but not only uh, do we, are, are we to understand the truth, you see how it goes together, we're under, to understand the truth that, that God has, has placed on our account the righteousness of Christ. But we are to put on Christ. Yeah. We are to put on his righteousness. His, this breastplate of righteousness. We are to put that on. What does that mean then? Uh, to, to understand that that's already applied to my account, you see, because I've been saved, trusted Christ, and, and, and I can never be unsaved, you right. see. I will always be saved in him. So what does it mean to put on this righteousness? To put on Christ. What does that mean? It means to live a righteous life. Yeah. You see. Uh, understanding positionally uh, between us and God this righteousness of Christ that is applied. I get that. But if I don't practice it, yeah, you right. know, make it practical in my life, then I become a weak and an ineffective soldier of the cross, you see. Yeah. And I have Christ's righteousness available to me to put on, right. you see, and to carry with me each and every day. Mm -hmm. You see, because you can tear up in 10 minutes 
what it will take you 10 years to build if you're out here professing that, yes, I'm a child of the living God. Yes, I'm a member of Sugar Grove Valley Baptist Church. But when I walk out these doors, if my life, if my life doesn't match what, it, if what I'm living doesn't match what I'm saying, I'm tearing up more than I could ever accomplish or build. And I become ineffective Amen. Amen. as a soldier of the tribe. So we must live this righteousness. We must put on Christ, put on this right, and carry it then with us. That's right. You see, every day. I shared with Michael the other day as I was driving home uh, Mo that we have been praying for here uh, accepted Christ the other day. God gave me the opportunity and the privilege to lead him to the Lord there in that warehouse uh, the other morning. And, and it blessed my heart, but now Mo's got some things uh, to deal with and some consequences of choices he's made in life that he's got to pay for and deal with. This that doesn't erase all of that, but, the, but now he just doesn't have to go through it alone. Amen. He has Christ Jesus. Amen. And that he has the right. But I would have never, hear me now, God would have never, it's not me, God would have never been able to work, use me, and work through me to help Mo if I had been uh, around that uh, warehouse like a lot of them old guys do. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, talking that uh, uh, vulgar talk, telling the vulgar jokes, or laughing at the vulgar jokes, or even staying where they're... Listen, when I hear it, I just walk away. That's right. I just walk away. Don't put yourself in a place or a position to fail. Don't set yourself up for that. Now, I work on construction sites. And these old rough uh, carpenters, amen. And these old rough pipe fitters and, and stuff. And, and boy, some of them so it, it get pretty rough around there sometimes. I can't just walk away from that all the time because that's how God's uh, given me my, my livelihood and my living, you see. And that's how I put milk on the cereal. So what do I do? Well, I try to be a light in the darkness, right. Brother Doug. Amen. I try to be soft, amen, yeah. and light. Uh, to a dying world. How do you do that? By putting on the righteousness Amen. of Christ. Not setting myself up as holier than thou. Right. Not carrying my big uh, large print Bible and thumping it and telling them how wrong and how awful they are. No! I tell them how good God is. Amen. Amen. And what he's done for me and how he's lifted me out of this fiery place. How he has saved me. How he has restored me. Giving me the other the testimony of my life, just being a witness of what God has done in my life. Amen. You see, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Satan is our accuser, but he cannot accuse us if we are living godly lives. Amen. You see. The life we live either fortifies us against Satan's attack or it weakens us yeah. against Satan's attacks. It's our choice. It will fortify, it will strengthen us, as you were talking about this morning, being strengthened in our faith, being strengthened in our walk with, with Christ, our spirit welling up inside of us when the attackers come. Hey, nothing can beat the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. And when it wells up inside of me, comes up inside of me, and it, it protrudes out from me, it creates that buttress that uh, that encircles me, front, back, side to side, above and below. The psalmist said, "He is my fortress, my high power, my rock." Amen. He hides me under his wing. Amen. Amen. When Satan's attacks come, not only has he given me uh, the armor, Amen, to protect me, but his hand is upon me and around me, and he just shields me. You see? That's why I said in things, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We will live a life that will fortify our strength against the enemy, or we will live a life that will weaken our strength Amen. against the enemy. Uh, when we when we live a life that, that we, we just sit with what we do is crack the door open. And we'd be like going to that bed tonight uh, with your door wide open and a, a light outside and a sign under it, come on in and get what you want. Amen. Amen. That's basically what we do when we live a life that, that weakens us in the faith. Amen. And 
we positionally uh, we're righteous uh, before God and in Christ and practical uh, we must live our righteousness daily or God's righteousness daily amen and not give Satan the opportunity uh, to attack us and then very quickly very quickly uh, let's uh, look at verse number 15 and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace uh, the, the sandals that these uh, Roman soldiers wore had, had nails, they called them hot nails, through them. Uh, and what that would do is it would give them traction and make it easier to stand in the sandy type soil uh, that they were in over there. And it would give them great traction and good footing. You see, it wouldn't slip in the battle. And, and when we stand upon the gospel of Christ Jesus and we have good foot, you see, the preparation of the gospel, what does that mean? We need to, we need to read, study, and understand this word of God. Amen. Amen. Study to show thyself approved, Amen. a workman without need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Not just listening to someone, taking their word for it, read it. Yeah. Let the Holy Spirit explain it to you. Let the Holy Spirit reveal the things that God has for you in this time, in this moment of your life that will help you and strengthen you. Amen. Shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel. Why? Why is that so important? Because when we find ourselves in the throes of battle, when we find ourselves at our darkest point, when Satan's attacks are raging against us, Jesus said, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of peace, Amen. of love, and of sound of mind. Amen. Amen. So when we are founded on the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's the boots we put on, amen, and we're yeah. standing upon that, and we're prepared in the word of God, amen. Hey, if you want to run the devil off quicker than anything, amen, you start quoting the scriptures to me. Try Freaks him out. He can't feel it. He just can't. Well, how do you know, preacher? Well, that's exactly what Jesus did. Amen. When he started tempting in, he said, it is written. It is written. Every time Satan would throw another a temptation out there, Jesus would just say, it is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. It is written. Thou shalt not believe it. By bread alone. Amen. 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 It is written. It is written. It is written. When Satan attacks, Amen. When it gets dark and the bombs are going off and it seems like that you, you're, you're slipping, you're losing hope, quote the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Hey, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He, he makes me to lay down in green pastures. He lies me, leaves me beside still water. He restores my soul. Amen. Hey. Glory to hey, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Well, Lord, I could walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Hey, I ain't gonna fear no evil. Why? Because my dad is with me. Amen. Yes, his rod and his staff are comforting me. Yeah. Amen. Oh, he prepares a table before me. Yeah, right. Amen. In the face of my enemy. He put all on my head and anoints me. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, Lord, somebody yeah. else out yeah. this morning. Yeah. I know some of you are in some battles. I know some of you yeah. are in some struggles this morning. Amen. You ought to shout for joy, yeah. understanding that God has provided you with every single yeah. piece of equipment that you need to deal with the enemy. Amen. 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 Well, glory. Amen. I don't apologize for getting excited about what God can do. Amen. Amen. Because I've seen what he can do in my life. Amen. Now, now here's, here's the thing, guys. And hear me now. Uh, the only way you get this issue, the only way you get this protection, and the only way you'll be able to stand against the enemy of this world, the flesh, and the devil, is to surrender your heart and your life to Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's why he died on that cross. That's why he shed that blood we were singing and talking about earlier. Right. Amen. That's, he, he has given that for his, his major way of escape. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning. If you're not in Sunday school, y'all be. Amen. And it'll be a blessing to you. I promise. But we're going to sing a song. Amen. Just a verse or two. If God is dealing with your heart this morning, 
for salvation, you come. Maybe you just need to come and, and kind of get your armor cinched up. Maybe you just need to come. Maybe you've dropped your shield. Maybe your breastplate of righteousness has begun to slip. Maybe you broke the shoelaces, amen, on uh, your, your, your uh, uh, footwear, amen, of the gospel of peace. Maybe, maybe you need a little help with that. Well, it's fruit this morning. Whatever it is, whatever it is, God is here. Jesus is here just to receive you to himself. Amen. You come, as we say. Father God, we thank you and praise you. I pray your spirit have its way.